everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time with Mother and Crone. Technical difficulties again, we're working on them. Welcome with us uh, today. We have a couple different kinds of teas and we're going to let Melinda tell you about what she's got in her cup. Yes, so I have, um, so actually last week after the show, my throat started hurting Sunday night and we were talking about this time of year is the time of year for colds and flus and allergies and sniffles and lo and behold my I I got it allergies sore throat so I have a couple different things in my tea today but the main ingredient is licorice root and licorice root um is an acquired taste it tastes like black licorice candy <laughs> so I have to add plenty of honey in it which is also good for the throat but um, licorice root is very good for colds and flus. Um, it breaks up the phlegm. It opens up your airways. Um, it's also good for a dry cough. Um, but other than that, it is also good for reducing stress. Um, it's also good for, of course, soothing the throat, but it also protects the liver. Um, if you have the actual root, you can even use it as a toothbrush. <laughs> And it helps um, with your strengthening your teeth and even whitening your teeth. Um, it's also an antiviral and anti-inflammatory. Um, so it does quite a bit of things. And magically, um, it's good for fidelity and uh, you know building strength and partnership. Um, also love. Um, there's a lot of good things for that as well. Um, and as far as the, the reducing stress, it boosts your adrenals. Um, so that's how it's able to help reduce the stress. Um, but you always wanna ask, consult with doctors because with licorice root, sometimes it's not recommended if you're pregnant. Um, so always consult with the herbs um, that you're taking or if you start doing a herbal um, regimen for yourself, you know, make sure that it's not gonna interfere with anything else that you're doing or any conditions that you have, but it's been oh, helping. That was, I was going to ask, is it helping any? That's, yes. that's the main thing. Um, when Melissa said she wasn't, I mean, Melinda said she wasn't filled, but for some reason I have my cousin's daughter on my mind. So we're, we're going to move her out. Um, I was thinking about sore throats. Now, when I was little, we used to do the honey for the sore throat. But mm -hmm. she was talking about licorice root, and I thought, oh, I'm not crazy about the actual licorice root, but I do like, and now this is where we have fun, anise. But I prefer the star anise, which is completely different than anise or aniseed. Aniseed comes from a plant, and it's related to the dill, cumin, fennel, caraway family, where star, wonderful little star, this is actually the fruit of the plant. And it's a different plant. And it's in the same family as the magnolia tree. That was kind of cool. Um, and this flavor in this is much more potent, uh, very strong. Again, it's a black licorice. And I was the one stealing all the black licorice jelly beans. So I like it. It's not just good for your respiratory infections and sore throats and that things. It is great for um, nausea, constipation, and after you eat a big meal, you feel like, you know, your stomach's out for a foot, take a cup of star anise tea and drink it and it'll reduce the bloating in your stomach. So it's good for your digestive. Um, it also has some really neat um, abilities in some of these. Of course, they're not 100% confirmed, but we like them anyway. Um, it's rich in antioxidants, vitamin A and C. So you can't go wrong with that one. Um, and the oil also contains a lot of different other chemicals in it, and it's used for treating cough and flu. Go figure. Um, it also helps with digestion, like I said earlier, relieves nausea, relieves some cramping. Um, after meals, it's great to release bloating, but they claim if you drink one glass of water infused with the crushed seeds at night, it will increase your sex drive. Of course, caught in my eye. So... <laughs> Now, if you just have a sore throat or you're not feeling good, does tea help? Believe it or not, when you have a sore throat, cup of tea. It's the soothing, the warmth, the flavor, and the aroma. And sometimes it actually, just that alone, will help release some of the stress involved. 
So just making yourself a cup of tea can help. It also Drinking fluids is what you need to do when your throat's dry, it gets worse. So drinking the tea helps any kind of fluids that you put in. But they're kind of claiming that for some reason, warm liquids work better than cold. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, if you've got a, a sore, itchy throat, you don't want to grab a cold water. You might want to grab a cup of tea or something warm. Um, and if you put honey in it, which I don't know anybody who doesn't drink it without honey in America. Mm -hmm. um, it, the honey also has some wonderful healing properties to it by itself. So they gave a list and Melinda, you are number two on the list. The first is slippery elm, licorice root, whorehound, chamomile, smeric, green tea, and then the combination teas, you know, sometimes you, you can buy them at the stores that are already um, mixed together for sore throats and stuff like that in the um, tea section of most of your grocery stores. So mm -hmm. they're saying that um, the best thing to do is just take a cup of tea, put a little honey in it and enjoy it. But if you can add something a little extra special, like an, an herb, always, always check that before you start ingesting anything. Um, mm -hmm especially herbs, you want to make sure it's not going to counteract or somehow influence any medication that you're already on or all conditions that you already have. So please, you know, keep an eye in mind. Always ask. You can ask a doctor. You can ask an herbalist. I mean, internet now is great. You can go on the internet and I'll tell you contraindications for using whatever herb you're looking at. But just to keep in mind, these are awesome. The teas are wonderful. Now, I have mine in a green tea. What is your in? What is your mixture? In? Um, this is this is also a, a green tea. Oh. Um, this has this is also infused with um, lemon lemon balm, and um, it has lemongrass as well. But the main ingredient is licorice root, um, and it is one of those combination teas. Um, that, you know, specifically for like sore throats and stuff. And honestly, that's all I've been doing all week is just the, my my licorice root tea and my tablespoon of honey and it's worked, it's, you know, I'm resting my voice. I do have a phone job, so, you know, <laughs> that that uh, where I'm talking all day. So that doesn't really help, but but no, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, in some like gargling warm salt water, of course that helped a lot too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not crazy about, about drinking it straight because I'm not a black licorice fan. I flicked those black jelly beans <laughs> far away from me. <laughs> I much prefer the red ones or, you know, but, um, but when you add honey though, I mean, yes, it has that little black licorice little bite to it, but it's not nearly as, you know, strong. And then you're still getting the benefit of the honey as well when you mix it in there. So, yeah, but it's, it's worked great. And don't forget when you're baking, um, this is used actually in Italian Christmas cookies. Um, the licorice flavor is used in a lot of different things. There's actually licorice infused alcohol that you can purchase um, as a ni nice little dessert type drink. But keep these things in mind. You know, what's funny is you have this on your shelf, you cook with it, you never think about using it for the healing properties. We have bay leaf on our shelf and it's like, okay, what do you do with bay leaff? A million things. <laughs> right. Bay leaf yeah. is like, you know, for a witch, bay leaf is like having flour in your kitchen. You can do right. Anything with it. So exactly. start thinking nowadays, start thinking, you know, more witchy. Um, we made teas out of this for healing. So we were actually being our own healers and we're also expanding the knowledge of what to use when you don't feel good. Um, and as, if it's just a little cold that's coming along, this is the time of year where it's like, almost like after the holidays, everybody gets sick. And I think it's the stress from the holidays wears you down a little bit. And now you're like, oh my God, it's over. And you're so over exhausted. And of course, with all the stress going on anyway, with what's going on in the world today, sometimes it's a little hard to remember. Um, start being a little bit more witchy in your kitchen girls but buy you some of this good stuff put it on your shelf i mean i have cloves on my shelf that i cook with and then if i'm doing something you know in the back in my witch room and it's like oh i need cloves i have to run out to the kitchen you know and i've had so many people when i've trained them over the years they're like 
oh, you do take out of your, I'm like, it's the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the it really is. And, and even when you make your tea and you're, you're stirring your tea, you can do, you know, magic that way too. And like when you're cooking, you know, whenever I do my tea and you, I'm stirring my clockwise, I'm setting my intention, putting my, you know, infusing my magic and, you know, saying what I need to say to help me get that boost of get better you know and we were in the we've been in the 30s and 40s here on the east coast of florida and then we we finally warmed up back into the 60s but when we started warming up a bit i started noticing a little bit of yellow on the car and i knew it was a matter of time before it was going to hit me and sure enough it did because i get like this every year my allergies are horrible um but um but yeah the sore throat went first and then monday morning the stuffy runny nose and but you know but this but honestly like i said i haven't taken any medications you know it's just been honey and tea and salt water and and i'm pretty much over with it i mean i have a little bit of residual congestion you could probably hear but um but way better than i was at the beginning of the week <laughs> just remember when you do buy your herbs and you use them if you buy them like you know, dehydrated kind of thing. They're only good for about a year or so because then they start to actually break down and they will molt. Um, they're still good for another two years to use as magical because it still contains the properties. So to circle your inventory, if you have the cloves, you've had them there for a year and they go back to the magical room so you buy new ones for your kitchen. That's Recycle. one way. Recycling and it, it cuts down because um, if you're like me, I I am a chef. I do cook a lot. So I have a lot of herbs in my kitchen. It's a lot cheaper recycling them, you know, especially you don't use a lot of the herbs that much. Like this is maybe once a year. So if I don't use this for another year, it's going to go back in the magical category. Marked the date when it needs to be trashed. And yep. that kind of keeps it safe. Totally agree. Mm. Um, we have a nice show again for you today with some interesting, interesting things happening. Just another shout out that in bulk is, oh my gosh, almost here. So our grimoire, we're going to go to that at, near the end of the show and we'll pull something out of that to make your holiday a little bit more special. If, um, if you're so inclined, there will be a ton of rituals online. Um, we will be having our rituals for a year starting on in bulk. So that will be our first ritual online in that series. Yay, I'm excited. Um, and that goes off on next Tuesday, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday, the 2nd of February. We'll actually start on Groundhog Day. So that's in bulk, and that ought to be interesting. Um, but right now, we have this really cool guy standing in the background who's waiting to come on. And Melinda, I want you to do the intro because I want to hear about the song you guys are collaborating on. Okay, well, before I talk about that, I'll introduce. So you may have heard of him in the community. Um, his name is Cloud the Pagan Rapper. Super, super awesome guy. Someone I am proud to call a friend. Um, we have sort of bonded recently and, um, and of that, has um, blossomed into a collaboration that we're working on, which was very unexpected, I will say so myself. Um, but we have him on the show today and we're super excited. And we're gonna be talking about some of his new stuff that he has coming up. And um, also talking about, you know, some of his background and some of his uh, stuff from his first album. Um, but without further ado, Cloud. Hello. Hello. Magically appeared. Yes. Hello, oh. ladies. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm excellent. A little under the weather, but but we're doing well. We have our tea. We are yes. we are doing our thing. So can't see the cup because the cup's black, but <laughs> it's there. I promise. <laughs> We'll see it when it goes in front of your face. <laughs> yeah, that's what's fun. Our cups do have our logo on them, but if we do the black, the green background, it's like you lose parts of your body as you move. Right. It's rather interesting. The 
cards floating. <laughs> so we're really excited to have you. And uh, we know that you've been really busy, busy, busy on uh, working on some new things. And for those of you out there that don't know a whole lot about um, Cloud and what he does or has been doing, do you want to introduce yourself and kind of explain a little bit about what you're working on and what you're doing? Absolutely. Okay, so um, I am a pagan musician. Um, I have my hands in many pots as well outside of the music world. Um, but music is really what drives me. And basically the whole rap thing really started spawning from the YouTube channel that I have. Um, and it's all kind of snowballed <laughs> from there. Um, but yeah, so basically what my goal is with the rap music that I've been writing is there, there's a couple of things that I'm trying to do. Um, the first thing is, is to put out a depiction of pagan life as it is without all of the whimsical and you know spiritual side of things but i mean the pagan life that we live and experiences that we have as pagans within the mundane world as well um and i decided to deliver this in a hip-hop format mainly due to the storytelling involved with hip-hop and there's not a whole lot of people within the pagan community, a lot of pagan musicians out there that are writing this pagan hip hop stuff. You know, uh, I'm one of maybe four that I can name off the top of my head. So it's definitely something different. And it's something to kind of shake up the normalcy of pagan music and yeah, so I just kind of fell into it, and I've been doing it ever since. Well, I like it. I You are definitely the first pagan rapper I've heard of, <laughs> and I know that you introduced, you've named a couple um, along the way that you've heard of, but it's really interesting because I know you and I have both talked about we're, we're fans of old school hip-hop, like 90s, you know, yes. hip-hop, um, and, you know, and... Um, it's really interesting because you do have all the, the, the pagan music and it is as great as it is, it all, a lot of it sounds very similar or the same, or like you said, whimsical and very, um, you know, it's just a lot of it kind of is in that same category. Um, so you're really bringing something completely different to the genre um, by doing the hip hop. And it's really, really awesome because the cool thing about, you know, what I love about, and I'll just say old school hip hop is the storytelling, like you said, um, you know, that's what you hear. You're, you're talking about a story um, and, you know, you, you write your own music. Um, so of course it's going to be personal. You're going to get inspiration from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just amazing what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's definitely personal. It's something that became personal for me, though, because mm -hmm. originally I wrote the first song, uh, the first rap song that I wrote. I actually wrote it as a joke um, and for for my YouTube channel, which at the time was called Moon Willow Magic. But now it is literally just called Cloud the Pagan Rapper. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> I was doing this project called the Wicked Music Experiment, and I was writing songs within different genres of music with pagan-inspired lyrics. And so I had to do a rap song. And when I did the rap song, everybody that heard it was like, dude, this is awesome. And I was like, all right. So I <laughs> sat down and I tried to write a serious song. Because the first song I wrote is called People Just Scared. And there is that song is basically just me poking fun at misconceptions and what the main mundane world thinks witchcraft is. And right. a lot of like humor in it and all of that. So the next song I wanted to make say, so, okay, if I can make a point, then I'll keep doing this. And then I wrote Try to Understand. 
Nice. And from there, I was like, okay, I'm just going to write a whole album. <laughs> you know? Uh-huh. And, and like three or four months later, Misconceptions was ready and it was, it was released. So that's really awesome. Yeah, it all happened really quick. <laughs> Because before you did, because how long have you been doing music in general? Uh, playing music since I was a teenager. Uh, mostly metal and punk rock. Uh, playing in bands and, you know, being, you know, kicking things over and, you know, being a hellion. <laughs> um, and, you know, spent a lot of time in a lot of mosh pits, a lot of hardcore shows, stuff like that. And, you know, like Thanks. I went from playing in like, like tough guy hardcore bands you know, of like the lyrics like, I'm tougher than you, you know, to, <laughs> you know, doing, right. making rap. <laughs> so right. uh, let's just say my path in music has been just as crooked with as my path in the craft has been. So, right. Yeah. That's, That's pretty awesome. I will admit my genre um, at my age is not rap. Um, I first heard and I was like, oh, rap. Okay. But... <laughs> Then I did the sensible thing and I listened to quite a few of your songs. And I was like, wow, you're old school. You tell a story. So that made it different than what I was listening to on the radio. Um, And your lyrics are, even if you're not pagan, your lyrics give you something to think about. It's not that, you know, I'm better than you. I made more money than you or whatever. You actually have a process that you're trying to talk through. And I found that interesting because you're not just singing about what's going on. You're actually working a process. You're, you're telling that story and working through it. Like uh, you start here and you end up down here and you've learned something in between. Yes. yes. So, the album is meant to take the listener on a ride of different emotions and how, you know, we feel as pagans as we experience certain things like such as, you know, hope. You know, when we when we feel very spiritual, you know, there's a song on there for that. When we're angry, when somebody says something to us because we're witches and they call us out in public or something, there's a song for that. You know, there's songs that hopefully pagans can relate to. You know, and I for that that purpose, I keep my lyrics very concise. Mm-hmm. And one thing you can bet on for anything that I ever write really is I'm going to say exactly what I mean. And <laughs> that's like um, yeah. sometimes yeah. it's a little in your face, and you know it, it, it can tend to be that way. Yeah, that's but, okay. Sometimes is needed. And you know, from the first album, you, you know, speaking about you know go, your different experiences and things, you know, the convenience store when you know it opens up with you're just going in the convenience store getting your cup of coffee and the person behind the counter sees your your pentacle necklace and starts saying oh that's the devil i mean how many of us have gone through that you know what i mean it's like it's so relatable that's what i love about and that song is an explosion of emotion Mm -hmm. and but it is also meant to be what we want to say right but we don't, you know, like, yeah. and so, you know, I tie it up at the end with like, I really should have said that. That's nah, not worth it. You know, like, because we don't a lot mm-hmm. of times, a lot of times we'll bite our tongue and be like, whatever, I got to go and we'll leave. But mm-hmm. then we're driving the work after something like that happens. And our mind is just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Nope. I mean, like that that song in particular, and of course, there's a lot of songs that I like from the first album. Um, but that one, I was like, oh my gosh, yes! Like, because it's annoying. It's like, ah, oh, read a book, Google something. It's not the way it is. And you know, it seems like half the time we're we're spending half of our time defending ourselves or our path. Not that not that we have to, but sometimes it's like, you know because of Hollywood and just because of, you know, depending on where you live too, I'm in the South, you know, 
people just aren't as open-minded and they just have a one track mind. And, you know, if they see something, it's, that's the way it is. And, you know, so I really, I really like that song. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, yes. You know, and it took a long time for me to wear, you know, like my pinnacle at work, for example. Um, but I wear it now. I mean, no one says anything, you know, it's no different than anyone wearing, you know, their cross or, you know, anything else. Right. Um, you know, but, but that was just, it was a really good song. I, I like that, but I like, Thank those, you. I, like <laughs> I really like on your songs too, that the information you convey is a hundred percent. They're mm -hmm. not Hollywood songs. We're not levitating. We're not doing, you know, any of that kind of stuff. It's actual songs. It's actual things in the past. So, um, I mean, let's face it, Charms did give us a nice little boost because now we weren't so weird. The original Sabrina was cute and funny, and the one on Netflix now is getting interesting. But uh -huh. most of it, Practical Magic was fun and all, but, you know, it really, there hasn't been something on that actually shows what we do that shows you in a daily basis. Like I get up, I get dressed, I go to work every morning. Um, I interact with all my coworkers. Um, you know, it doesn't show like that side of us. And then I come home, I shut my door and if it's a ritual night, I'm, you know, going to the altar, setting the altar up, getting that ready to go. Or i am got an article I got to write or something like that. It never shows us in the actual light where we're actual people, you know, washing clothes, washing dishes, you know, changing diapers. If you still got little ones at home, you know, all those things that make a life a life. Hollywood has never picked up on like Samantha used to clean her house with a little, you know, the little twitch of the nose, you know, the vacuum cleaner would start going. Yeah. When I can get that down, cause I would really love that one, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good Lord. Everybody would convert at that point. There would be no other religion if something could do housework for us. Um, Agreed. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to be so upfront with what I'm doing. You know, because I mean, let I me mean, let's face it. The main point of the album is to remind people, not just pagans, but like, you know, for people who aren't pagan that would listen to the album, if, if they do listen to it, which would be awesome, that pagans are people, too. You know, we get up, we put our pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. You know, like it's not, you know, this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's this huge misconception of what magic actually is, and that is why the album is titled Misconceptions. <laughs> it's well, well, that's great. Is because through your music, you're educated. That's what's so great about it. It's like not only fun. It's like not only like this awesome beat, but you're educating all at the same time. That's what's so brilliant about it. Well, I appreciate that. I really do. Yeah, yeah seriously, like, I can see some kids, actually younger kids, singing your music and learning. Like, I have, have come across a few, um, you know, mainly some some of my daughter's friends and stuff, because naturally she has a copy of my album, you know, and she's like showing her friends like, oh, it's my dad's album, you know, <laughs> but, you know, like songs on there, for example, like do your research. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't be more concise to the pagan community than I am in that song about doing your research, <laughs> you know, like, and for the people who are just picking up on things and people that are following, let's say your social media influencers and all of that, who are really just in it for a follow count and they're grabbing stuff off of Pinterest and talking about it. It's, there's so much more to it than that. I mean, even when it comes from like a personal growth and self study side oh. of it, you know, mm -hmm. which, which isn't talked about. I mean, lately shadow work has been a hot topic on right. your talks and your Instagrams and all of that, but it wasn't for years, you know, and you had a lot of people picking up on the craft and just thinking they're going to go off and do magic without really taking the time to get to know themselves before doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that song is literally meant for that. Like, you know, do your research. <laughs> yeah, shadow exactly. work is interesting. Um, that's dark moon, new moon work. And I know a lot of uh, different groups 
I don't do dark moon or new moon. And it's like, wow, you miss half of you. If you only know your white side, you don't know the black side. And right. we're a mixture of both, no matter how you look at it. Precisely. Yes. Trust and believe there are days when if I did have the power, everybody around here would be on a lily pond. But <laughs> God has broke my wand. Um, <laughs> Because uh, that is the conception. The first thing now, I've been on the path for just over 50 years. And the first thing someone says to me is like, well, what's magic? And I'm like, life mm -hmm. is magic. It's electric. Just think of electricity. It's all around you. It's happening all the time. You can change your life. You don't need magic. Just change your thought process. Look at something from a different perspective. But when we do the shadow work, which is the hardest part, trust me, there's times when I need to be put in my little timeout corner for not doing my shadow work. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the tougher parts. And someone asked me one time, what was the toughest part about being a witch? And, and this was on a, um, a show. And I told them, I said, it's having to learn who I really am. Because I have to take that side of me that I'm not proud of, that I don't want to associate with and i have to talk to her daily mm -hmm. to keep Absolutely. her behaved i mean we <laughs> all have our our inner demons if you will or our shadow self and and basically if you're not in constant contact with that to be able to accept that that is a part of you then i mean really you're just lying to yourself at that point yeah you know i mean i mean to be plain and simple <laughs> about it so, you know, and that's you're never going to be happy. So I actually am. The next album that I'm working on is a little more personal from that side of things. You will. There is a couple songs where I full on beat myself up. And then there's a couple songs where I'm talking myself up like I got the biggest ego in the world. You know, it, it's which is kind of the same concept, but more on a personal level instead of a community level. Right. Um, you know, so hopefully, still people, a balance. yeah, <laughs> still a balance. Well, on your so, misconceptions album, I have to say, I loved your song and I did listen to the album, so I do know the, the words to it. Um, was take a look around that to me that touched me, and I don't know why, but when I heard that song, I found myself humming it. And you know, I think about the lyrics, and it was it's the way you presented and honored the goddess in the way, you know, you did it in such a way that it wasn't mushy, it wasn't putting them on a pedestal, but it was a very every day, this is how I honor, you know, and I really enjoyed that song. Now, I understand you got a couple songs that you might be able to like play for us. Uh, I do. I do have a couple songs cool. um, ready, which uh, we're going to drop some breadcrumb, breadcrumbs for the next album. Uh, but we're we're gonna finish it off with a really big big breadcrumb of uh, what Rev Melinda and I are working on right now. Um, but I actually did a collaboration with another one of our Karelian sisters, um, Sir Ebony Nash, and so this song is called "Vicious" and. Um, Sir Ebony made the beat and she wrote the music for it um, and so I just wrote the lyrics for it and so what my vision was for these particular lyrics was that not every witch you come across is going to be a Wiccan and not every witch you come across is going to be all about love and light so if you cross some witches there's a very chan good chance that you could find yourself with a poppet of you made somewhere or whatnot. Um, <laughs> so the song is called Vicious. Um, and yeah, let me cue that up real quick. And I really do hope you guys like it. And I hope Sarah Ebony is watching right now because that would be awesome if she is. If not, I hope she catches up on this. Um, but yeah, this song is going to be released and available soon. We're just kind of working out the bugs and, you know, distribution and all of that is pretty hardcore when it comes to setting everything up. So hopefully we can get this out to you guys soon. All right. 
Let we'll me mute ourselves so you can. I'm going to mute myself as well while we do this, and then we'll we'll go ahead and play it. All right. Yeah. What up, y'all? Nah. Better look out, man. Yo. Vicious. Yo. Vicious. ELN on the beat. Yo. Get him. 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 Better make good decisions, bitches can't be vicious. Better make good decisions, bitches can't be vicious. Better make good decisions, bitches can't be vicious. Y'all know me and y'all know my flow is a silver tongue, modern bard, rhyming everywhere I go. Pick up the piece, gonna kill the flow and pass the drone. Go off the dome, catch a vibe, get you in the zone. And he and Lang got us tripping on half those. Till you wanna be sticking around for a while, man. And wanna pick up on, pick up all the new style, man. E.L. and the cloud cooking heat like a bake sale. Taking over your city like our name, man, to Barksdale. Gonna come down, come down to the wire, man. You ain't ready, you ain't ready. To jump in this frying pan Messing with the wrong witches And end up when I pop it up You torn apart and covered in stitches But wait, you hold your fridges Let's just start getting pigeons Better make good decisions Better make good decisions Cause these witches can be vicious Everywhere, normal people Yo, they stop and stare it's Cause they feel our power They're reacting like we don't care That's right, we don't care Vicious Vicious Yeah Yeah Better make good decisions, which just can't be vicious. Round two. Fight! Yourself like a surgical incision Take it all in y'all, try to get in touch with yourself You'll come out a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser When you're working with yourself Now which is coming in all flavors So we can be your neighbors Just try to assist and run to your savior We all connect to the divine mystery in different ways Even in this crap there are many bands that we can take Not all of us out there all about that love and light man Not all of us out there steady flexing Look for a fight man Witches can be vicious depending on their path and talent But all we really want is to achieve a sense of balance So if you gonna play around, play around and break Haunt you by witches, just remember that witches can be vicious Better make good decisions, better make good decisions Better make good decisions, cause these witches can be vicious Vicious That was awesome. That yeah. was really good. Yes. That, that beat 
is amazing. She did awesome. Uh, she sent it to me, and I was like, I have to. <laughs> I have yeah. To, you know, I mean, and- she's amazing anyway, for those of you that don't know. But, I mean, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, so you can definitely go and find ELN on cloud on SoundCloud. Um, her music is phenomenal, and yeah. I really enjoyed working with her on it. Um, so... Well, and I already told you my favorite was round two fight. (laughs) (laughs) So fun fact, that is not a sample. I actually recorded saying that. Yeah, that was actually me doing that because I realized I I went and found the sample of it and then realized that I would have to get the rights to the sample for the song. And I was like, well, I'll just do it myself. (laughs) It It sounded awesome. I love it. (laughs) But yeah, yeah. So that's that is is something kind of like off to the side that that I've done. Um, and uh, I can't thank Ebony enough for even being like, "Hey, you want to do this?" You know, because yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's really awesome. Now, when you write, do you typically do the beat and then the lyrics? And I know you and I have talked about this with our collaboration. Yeah. But for those of you that don't know. Um, what's the what's your songwriting process? So my, my process is basically um, now I haven't been making a whole lot of my beats for this next album. Mm-hmm. I have been searching and licensing beats. Um, and there is a whole business process to that. So if I started talking about it, I put everybody to sleep. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have been, you know, finding some very good beats and paying for them because that is, you know, it's worth it. Yeah, nothing you know, wrong. you get what you pay for. You really do. Um, and I let the beat tell me where it's going to go. Nice. You know, like whatever the beat sounds like, whatever vibe that I'm picking up from the beat, that's what I'm going to write about. And so I write to the beat and I also mm-hmm. focus on delivery while I'm writing. So I want I write line by line to the beat to make sure that it sounds good. And that's a good point because you and I are collaborating and I wrote and and my part's not in the song yet. We'll just say that because I'm finding my rap voice. (laughs) But um well and then I got sick. Um but um I used to write poetry. I'm getting back into it more, making time for myself for that. So the lyrics kind of came naturally, but see, I've never done the whole song process though, you know, that's sort of, and that's what you and I kind of found out was I had all my lyrics done, but then trying to fit it in the space that I had. And we had to kind of go in and chop some words out. And, you know, I didn't like the way that it sounded or fit so that makes a lot of sense um and you even asked me did you did you write this before or after you heard the beat because i was i wrote i wrote it in the car line waiting to pick up my daughter at school (laughs) now some rappers do just have a rhyme book that they have they just write in and they just fit it and make it work and then they do the wordplay to make it fit i personally don't do that because i feel that the music drives the song. The lyrics are, you know, the cherry on top, you know? Right. So, right. But if you have a song with a beat, that's like, meh. Right. Nobody's going to care what you're saying anyway. Right. Cause it's you know? hard to get into. Well, that's like whenever, like I heard, so when you sent me the different samples of the beats and then I, I picked the one that I really, really liked for ours. And because it, to your point, it kind of got me in that, mode i was like oh i feel i feel this like i feel this beat so i was like we have to go with this one you know right um and the other one was great too but but for what we were trying to do with with our collaboration i was like oh it's totally got to be this one right now i turned that other beat into something very good yes you know which will be coming up later but you guys will have to have to wait on that right (laughs) Um, no, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a good point. Um, you know, the, the lyrics won't matter as much if the, if the, if the music's not there, if right. you, you know, especially with the genre of rap, because let's face it, it's a, a whole to do about the beat. I mean, if you don't have something that hits you, it's, right. you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, 
you know, what's the point? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, the, the second album is coming along very well. Uh, so I, I released the first album in April of last year. Mm-hmm. Right dead smack in the middle right of the pandemic. the pandemic. You know, um, I've yet to do a live show um, <laughs> because of the pandemic. Right, that was one of my questions. Sure. Yeah, um, and but we're getting there. We're we're gonna get there. I will eventually be out on the road and checking out all these festivals and coming and visiting everybody, you know. And you know, in the meantime, we, I mean, with with CEM Broadcasting, we're we're hosting, you know, festivals and everything else. I mean, there's a platform there to do. I mean, it's not the same thing, of course, but until we can get to that place again, that might be something to look into as well. Doing a live show. You know, that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have done a couple. Um, I've done a couple. um, But, you know, I'm just kind of hanging around going, hey, anybody uh, need a rapper? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So do you want to do a little sample of our, we don't have to do. (laughs) I can. I can. Is it it PG-13? I can't remember. Um, Yes. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> now I, I also I have another sample prepared for an other song off of the new album as well, but that is not so much PG thirteen. But I could always cut it before it gets to that point. Um, but so it's really up to you on where we want to go with it. That's fine by me. We have we have time. If we <laughs> we if we go a little if we go over, it's not a big deal. Between All right. Well, we have- I'll. I'll give you guys a little sample, like a half a verse of something that I'm working on right now, which is in the mastering process. Um, And this song is called Perceptor. All right. Um, And it's about, it's basically telling people to open their eyes and to realize that we as individuals are divine beings, you know, and so why would we, sit there and not embrace that individuality and become toxic individuals repeating things that we're told to say and repeating things that are sent to us by the masses you know like mm-hmm. you know your your media social media ideas and things that just breed toxicity in our society not just our pagan community but in society in general and um, so this song, I, I say a lot of a lot of. Uh, there's a few cuss words in there, so we're gonna cut it off before we get to that point. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yes, okay. um, but let me cue that up because I am very happy with where this song's going. So we're gonna do that, Absolutely. all right? And then we're gonna we're gonna play a little bit of what we got going on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Let me mute myself up here and cue that stuff. Five injections without any effect at all. I refuse to give up now. We'll try radiation. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Toxic. Yo, check your perceptors. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll with emotion, the spell that you're casting, the final outcome card, the tower, disastrous. I don't need no tarot deck to tell you what the facts is. Yo, your logic flaw is falling from your past, man. Flying off the handle, playing a mind demise. Every time I raise my fist on behalf of black lives, I just don't see a logical point in hating people. Taking issue with people and don't see others as equal. Yo, live and let live, you live and let die. Then close your eyes, meditate, and leave your hate behind. A cursory evaluation of your mental health. Capabilities in the case to me, you might not understand me. You know, all right, <laughs> saved us. We, we get, get to a, a little bit of a angry cussing yes. part from that point that's on, okay. we'll but that's it. just a little taste. Um, I, I want to say lyrically, that song is one of the better that I've written. Um, the second verse of that song, he loves the whole tarot 
reference. Yeah, the, 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 there, there's also a Transformers the movie Easter egg in there. If anybody oh, can pick nice. it out, let me know. <laughs> nice. But but yes, um, I uh, the second verse of that song really brings the point of the song together. But I just think the first like couple lines of that are amazing. So I figured I'd play yeah. them. Um, it was. It, it was. was. It's very in- introspective when you start listening to the words. Yeah, and absolutely. Music, it, we can remember music more than we can remember anything that's told to us. For Agreed. some reason, music sticks with you. My father used to say, I, I grew up in the 50s and 60s, so I know all like the Tommy, Tommy James and the Shondells and all those, you know. He's like, you can remember the words to 400 songs, but you can't remember to do your homework. And it was like, that was really a thought. My father didn't realize it, but it was a thought provoking statement at the time because he was right. I could remember the words to any song on the radio, but don't ask me what my homework was. Yep. And it's yep. music just, just, I don't know, just transits time and dimensions, I think. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I tell my wife I'm going to take the trash out, you know, and then I forget. Right. But if you ask me to bring back the lyrics of a song I used to listen to daily when I was 14 years old, I could still do that. Yeah. Or <laughs> if you haven't listened to a song in 20 years and then you hear it all of a sudden and you can still recite every single word to it, yep. you know, it's like you heard it yesterday, you know. While you're dancing in your kitchen. Yeah. yeah exactly. Music <laughs> yeah. drives us as people. I mean, art in general drives us as people. I totally- it's a sign of the times that we live in and it is. A, is something that you know we use to speak and some of us use to connect with the greater universe out there you know oh like, i most definitely agree i have that experience when i listen to Jimi hendrix i'm sorry i i totally have that type of experience when i listen to him <laughs> i you know I, music is yeah i mean it 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 plays in your emotion, you know, you, when you're angry, when you're sad, when you're, you know, all those things, it, it gets you through it. And yeah, I mean, like, like I said, Jimi Hendrix among others, but his guitar playing just takes me to another world, honestly. And, and it's amazing that in many of our rituals, we've stopped using music so much. Um, a lot of rituals now we, and I know now we can't do it online because you got to get all the permissions and all the silliness that goes along with it. But I've always had music in my rituals when we did them, you know, in person, because even if you don't know the word, your foot starts tapping, you get into that mode and you're there. Well, um, just think about like dr- what drumming does for ritual and just, oh my gosh, you know. You know, I keep a bongo drum in my trunk because you never know when a drum circle is going to break out. Especially there you go. Bunch of witches. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, I know you guys, all right? That area is known for its drum circles. You guys have like massive. Yes, there are some excellent there. drum circles in New Jersey. <laughs> I, I envy that. When I was in Baltimore, I've been to a couple of New Jersey drum circles and I was like, I thought we had good in Baltimore. No. Mm, yeah, they'll get there and they'll be like 30, 40 people deep. Like, and they're <laughs> all perfect. It's like... You sit there and it's like, oh my God, they're all synchronized. They're all, and you're like going, oh my God. When you hear some of them where I'm from, it's uh, like your little toddler with the cotton pans in the kitchen beating on the, yeah. That's, <laughs> it's like a, it's kids. like a kindergarten class with all the toy drums and toys. Yes, and to, but yeah. uh, <laughs> New Jersey has some freaking awesome drum circles. You guys are like the king of drum circles. And I, I absolutely love it because the drums just, I mean, music in general, when you're chanting or or meditating on music, I mean, we use sound for all of that. And it's just like, yes. that is the most awesome thing. It can either put you in the mood or take you out of a bad one and put you into a better one. See, see, I've been toying around with something. Uh, I have this song on my first album called The Journey, a hip hop meditation, right? Yes. And the lyrics to this song literally take you to the point. It's literally walking you into a meditation. And then I say, now go explore. And I let the beat run for like 16 bars. Now for the live version of that, I have a version of that where that beat is running for like five minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and then I bring everybody back. 
You know, it, it's something that is quite experimental. I don't know how it would work out, but you know, I I, I do need some guinea pigs to try it. But yeah, we'll so capture you from New Jersey up, and bring you down. Me, maybe yeah. one day I will be able to get down there from. from we'll have here. to bring you down and just you know get you in on one of those. I I could just visually see where it's happening. And the groups and the people that will be there. So it would be like super awesome. Oh my God, don't tell the neighbors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get her run right out of the neighborhood there. Well, you know, that as would... soon as this pandemic passes and everything starts opening back up and all of that, I mean, I am definitely looking forward to getting out on the road. Over this year since I've released this album, I have met a lot of people and I have been speaking online with a ton of people, working on a lot of projects and really been doing a lot of work in the greater pagan community. And it's something that I always wanted to get into. It's something I always wanted to do to help out with the greater pagan community. So absolutely, when this is done, I look forward to coming down that way and Oh, we would love to host you. Wouldn't that be awesome? Mm. Of course, we'd run every neighborhood we were in, but we'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> Never so let speaking of, first. speaking of, before we play ours and um, sort of tie up the show here, tell people about that want to be able to find your music. Tell them where they can find your stuff. And also, you have a podcast. So yes, I do. Kind of Tell people all about your okay. stuff. So let me go ahead and pitch all of my stuff. It's going to take all you about it. 10 minutes. Um, no. <laughs> all right. So first things first, um, when I was talking about helping out in the greater pagan community, one of the things that I do is I make YouTube videos about pagan musicians on international pagan radio. Um, so if anybody wants any information on any of those musicians, or if you're a pagan musician and you're watching this, let me know because I make artist spotlight videos and do interviews with artists for International Pagan Radio. You can check that out on the International Pagan Radio YouTube channel. Um, I also have a podcast called Witchcraft Grenade, which is a humorous and fun podcast. We focus, like our main rule is to have fun, but we do have guests on. We talk about you know, pagan topics. And, you know, if you're an author and you come on, we will talk about your book, but we usually end up going off on a million tangents and just having a good time with each other because it's really awesome to be that loose, to be able to talk to people. And the podcast, one of my favorite things about it is because you get to learn the person behind what it is that they're pitching. Exactly. You know? Instead of just, we're going to talk about the book and that's it. We're getting to know the person behind it. That is something that I think is very important to know who you're buying from when you're buying things. Um, so, and the podcast is also there for, you know, people, you know, like us that have, that have shows that have these things that are musicians or whatever, to be able to have their voice and speak on it. And while we're talking about, it, I would also like to personally invite both of you ladies to come on the podcast at some point next year. And we could do that, you know, that some point this year, say. Um, right now, I think we're booked out through April. Um, cool. but we can, we can definitely set something up for later in the year for you ladies to come on and talk about tea time. You know? I would love that. I'd have to, well, Melinda and I could get together and we, I, that show on the road for me, I'd come over to Jacksonville and we'd sit there. You could interview yeah. both of us together. Yeah. That would be excellent. That would be excellent. Or we could do it through Zoom, however you oh, want to no. do it. See, this gives me another excuse to go to Jacksonville. <laughs> I don't understand. I have to have an excuse. Like this month, we're going to talk a little bit about why I'm going to be there <laughs> next weekend. And then, you know, I don't want to wait till April. So we'll figure right, out right. something in between. And then when April comes, I'll have to be out there for your show, of course. I mean, I, I, you know, or June or July or whenever your show is. See? Yeah, whenever, whenever that is. That's how you that just works. let me know, and I'll make sure I'm there. Oh yeah. <laughs> but, but absolutely. And on the music side of things, first off, everybody that has reached out to me about my music, and a lot of the people in the Karelian tradition have done an absolute lot and there's a lot of people who have been reaching out to me i've met a ton of people i just want to actually thank every single one of you out there for listening to my music for inviting me into your cute little family here and all that <laughs> and you know because i've recently joined the tradition myself um i uh really it means a lot to me 
you know, that I've met so many people and I have so many people reaching out and so much support, you know. Um, so if you want to find my music and check it out, you can check it out at Cloud Raps Wicca, all one word, at bandcamp.com. That's my bandcamp. You can buy it. And if you want a physical CD, I will ship it to you myself. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, you can do that through Bandcamp. If not, I it is available on every streaming site you can name of. Um, so you can find me on any streaming platform. You can just Google me and it'll bring up links to be able to find it. Um, I also have a new single that I just released last month called Original Pagan, which is a very old school vibey song talking about me being an original as an individual myself, not so much like I'm some OG pagan, more I'm an original person. You know, I, there's not a whole lot of pagans out there running around with khaki pants with flat brim hats on and you know what i mean like like i i'm i'm my own person you know and that's what that song depicts and so it's very much you know i honestly never thought that i'd be having anything released to begin with so you know i i feel that the gods have truly blessed me with all of this yeah. and um, you know, so if you want to check it out, by all means, if you don't like it, that's cool, too. You know, um, I put the album on sale purposely for ten dollars. So that way, if you take a shot on it and you don't like it, you only wasted ten bucks. Um, <laughs> so, there you go. I think that's very reasonable, but I will say I think it's worth ten dollars for all of you. Well, thank you. And your podcast is on. It's on Red Circle. Um but you can find it on Spotify, um, Apple. Apple. You can find it anywhere. You search up Witchcraft Grenade. It'll come up all over the place. Like us on Facebook because we are currently on a pretty crazy meme campaign where we've been, I've been making a ton of memes, like witchy memes, and posting them up there. Um, nice. And I've been having an absolute blast with that, too. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much for that information. I hope you all will go out and find his stuff because it's amazing. And... Um, if you want to go ahead and queue up our little breadcrumb to sort of wrap things up. Yes. And I think Sam is also going to close up with an in-bulk thing from the Grim Wall. You got it. You got it. I already have it queued up. I just have to move it a little bit. All right. So I have to cut the beginning off. Um <laughs> because <laughs> we're keeping this pg yeah <laughs> even though i think it's i think it's hilarious what i actually say um and it's very true but people will hear it soon enough <laughs> yes okay let me go ahead and share my screen and mute myself and run this here thank you so much for letting me do all this by the way oh we love it your family right. absolutely <laughs> 21 seconds in before i can even play anything it's great you claim you're authentic, but your ego's apparent I'm just saying that the shoe fits wear it Internet fame got you yearning for more Got all these people listening, yo, respect your platform right. You claim you're authentic, but your ego's apparent I'm just saying that the shoe fits wear it just saying. Internet fame got you yearning for more Got all these people listening, yo, respect your platform I'm not trying, yo, to start another witch war Things need to be said, so let me have the floor I'm glammed up pretty, but you just a distraction only worried about your internet traffic all about your ego you forgot about your message spouting out nonsense got your followers guessing now I'll be sure to like and subscribe when I find some real person somewhere in your vibe that was cool nice I'm excited got some good really good music coming up um so, and I know I've heard a lot of your songs because I do have your album. I'm on Bandcamp now ordering your album. Oh, well, thank you. 
So, um, yeah, I'm still old school. I like to have the physical things so I can play it when I want to hear it. Well, as soon as the USPS gets it to you, you'll have it. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I've had a few instances with the United States Postal Service where it has taken like two weeks for me to get the CD to them, even though I mailed it. And I'll give a tracking number and all of that through Bandcamp. And it's still. But you know what? That is. Part of the course. It's kind of the way things are right now, you know. Yeah, exactly. PS doesn't have Prime, where it's going to have it at <laughs> right, right. The doorstep at eight AM, you know. So, yeah, that's the whole problem. It does not have Prime. <laughs> um, no, but we've um, the supply chain. I work with supply chains um, in what I do, and I know that I work all over the world, so I am dealing in twenty-two different. 30 different countries and supply chains all over the world are screwed up. Sometimes you can get it in a day and sometimes it's like two weeks and you're like, I got it yesterday in a day today. It's two weeks and it's a supply supply chain that we've had issues with, unfortunately, but hopefully it gets a little bit better. I can say USPS hasn't been too bad. All things considered. (laughs) Um, and I know that they're going crazy with all the good stuff that they have to ship out normally on a normal day. Absolutely. And Amazon is going nuts. So I see the trucks everywhere. It's like, yeah. why? They're only a few steps away from having their own private military and having corporate sovereignty. <laughs> you know, I'm really <laughs> thinking, kind of feeling that way. That. <laughs> yeah. As scary as it sounds, it kind of sounds like that's what's happening nowadays. You know, <laughs> everybody's going to be doing amazon prime yep you know but well, yeah they're... well awesome having you and i'm sure we'll have you again sometime especially when the second album rolls around um but i want to thank you so much for your time and sharing your talents and the information and and know, awesome and i love this you. is on band camp so yes. if you guys want to follow this is band camp it's a free app you can download um i find it absolutely wonderful because i can actually listen to music i like on it you know <laughs> uh, it's getting a lot of believe it or not there's a lot of pagan songs on Bandcamp. it seems to be like the thing um mama jean is on there sj tucker's on there there's a lot of good music on there um and nowadays i mean there for a while we were downloading tunes to our phones and then something happened and now they're not on your phone anymore and i could never find them mm-hmm. yeah so i'm gonna have to find a teenager out here to figure out on my phone where I well, well fun fact i actually made misconceptions on my cell phone right and <laughs> really when 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 the phone went through that switch where like google play music is now like youtube and all of that i am really glad that i moved all of the master tracks to my desktop before that happened because i have lost all of them I have uh, lost they're everything. They're just lost in my phone. Like, I can't even find them. <laughs> they're not in your phone anymore. Evidently, it went to something on YouTube, and I've not been able to figure it out. So now I'm going to get 400 emails to tell me how to figure it out. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure I'm probably going to get a few, too. Yep. <laughs> but I lost, like, I have, my playlist is absolutely bizarre. because I like all genres of music. So I have everything from Patsy Cline, uh rock of ages with you know that whole 80s mm-hmm. thing and then i have all of my pagan music on it emerald rose um sj tucker mama gina i mean you know all of them and it's like i go to play it i plug my phone into the car and it's like I lost my music you know <laughs> and uh yeah so somebody was sorely disappointed on our last road trip because I didn't have a lot of the CDs. I purchased them on my phone. So when somebody, I'm either waiting for one of my younger grandchildren to come over, or I'm going to snag one of the neighbor's young children over here to figure out my phone for me. Um, Don't (laughs) laugh, you know. My son used to do it all the time for me. Everybody thought my name was Damn Mom because that's all he ever said to me. Damn Mom, what'd you do now? Um, (laughs) So, yeah, but we did lose all that music, and that was a shame because I think everybody had, what, a million tunes on your phone? Yeah. Yeah, I had a ton of mine. Yep. All right. Well, 
ladies, thank you so, 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 so much. No, we appreciate you coming on. This was awesome. I love talking with you too. I really do. Um, so yeah, at any time you guys ever want me to come on and hang out, you just say the word. Ooh, All right. That's bad news because that's going to happen. That's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i'll definitely be in touch and we can set something up for you guys to come on the podcast as well oh that would be yeah. wonderful for that yeah, yeah absolutely Sweet. okay well, we'll talk to you later all right bye. bye and remember everybody to look for cloud on Bandcamp as well as on youtube pick it up there because you can hear some really good stuff and trust me when i say it's not your normal rap it's some really good stuff on there Yes. So yes, I, I highly, highly triple recommend this stuff. I really don't. And look at me, you know, you not expect me to like rap music. <laughs> His one, the one song that I listened to the music and the one that really got me was just that one song off the Misconceptions album. Um, the way he honored the goddess was take a look around. And it, it just, it touched me. I was like, wow, this doesn't happen unexpectedly right yeah. and a genre that you normally would never listen to i would never ever and i'll be the first to tell you i would never have listened to his music and um even ebony's music is wonderful but until i first heard it i oh i don't know if i'm gonna like it you know when you get to be a certain age there are certain songs that you resonate with and a lot of the music just like your parents yelled at you turn that racket down um like if it you're someone that loves classical, you're probably not going to be a metalhead. You know, it's right. kind of <laughs> exactly. Now I have enough weird background that I like classical, but still, it's you know you're, that's not the genre I'm going to go to. I'm not going to go and look at rap music seriously. Um, I'm not going to well, go. The new stuff is a lot different than like we were saying, like the '90s. Old, it's it's very different, very yeah. different. And it's got, his music has a story. I mean, and that was the most fascinating thing I saw was he tells a story. He gets facts across. He's he's giving you information. So it's not just like, you know, some of the songs, you know, I made this much money. I killed this person. I did this. It's, oh, you know, this is how life is. And this is what happens. And this is how you deal with it. Right. A little bit different. I really enjoyed his music. I would, like I said, I would have never in a million years if you just handed that to me, I would have went, yeah, right. But once I started listening to it, it was like, holy cow, this is like really good stuff. Well, um, that's the thing for those of you that do not listen to to hip hop or rap, you know, check it out because you never know. Pam's perfect example. I mean, it's very relatable. It's you know, it, it, it's storytelling it's you know wow thing, this. this is every song is different on that album they're not all the same and i say that because i've listened to rap before i mean i have younger you know generations around me um but a lot of it is the same stuff all the time you know it's either the same the sound or right right Right. And it's like, oh my God, if I have to listen to this one more time, how many more songs are on that album? And the whole album's like that. Well, and even like, even like now with like pop, a lot of the pop thing, you know, I'll hear on the radio, they're sampling a lot of the old stuff and they're not, the originality isn't there as much as it used to be because they're right. sampling so much of the old school stuff. And it's like, I mean, it sounds awesome a lot of the times and you're like, oh, that's kind of awesome. They, but at the same time, it's kind of like, oh, like do something original, kind of like with the movies. Everybody's doing a remake. Nobody's writing an right. original movie anymore. It's like, come I on. I know there's original thoughts out there somewhere. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, you're right. And a lot of it is the same stuff where every song on that misconceptions and I listened to most of them, they were all different. So it's, if you don't like that one, go to the next song and see if you like that one kind of thing. Yeah. And like I said, his stuff was, I super, super enjoyed it. And he is such I have, I have the album. I love it. I have He it. is such a person to talk to. He is so personable. He's, he's really easy to talk to. I mean, doing an interview with him was like, just talking to anybody but he's oh yeah really, that's my buddy really awesome <laughs> I, I really enjoy him not just his music but as a person because he's not one of those he just gets excited when people listen to his music yeah and uh, shout out to ebony 
Um, I text yes, her and I let her know we were playing the song and she was so excited to hear it. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, but that collaboration was awesome. I mean, I know it. I know. The, the music was really intriguing. Like I said, that's completely different. All the songs we heard today were different. like completely different of each other. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of unique in its own situation because usually all the albums all the songs sound the same it's like they laid down one track and just did words to them right it's usually like an one album will have like a a theme musically and they kind of all sound kind of the same you know and then they kind of grab whatever that musician or artist is going through at the time is kind of right but it all still sounds the same you know and then six months from now you or six years from now you'll get the best of album and that's the album you end up buying Right, right. Okay, well, we still have a little bit of Inbook, and um, Inbook is like, oh my gosh, next week. It's very exciting. Uh, a lot of different groups are having Inbook actually on the weekend, so you can zoom into a lot of the different um, groups that are having their um, rituals this weekend. Ours will be actually on the day itself, so it's going to be a Tuesday. Our times are always Eastern Standard Times, and I'm saying that now because sometimes we get confused in in time zones and, you know, craziness. Um, All of our rituals start at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. Now, I know that's really early for the the West Coast, but the West Coast can always catch us as we finish up the ritual. They can do it 9 o'clock their time, so they can play it again. Um, But for Inbulk, Inbulk is also Candle Mass, and Candle Mass is awesome, and with candle mass we're talking about candles and we're trying to entice the sun to come back again that was the event so you light a million candles so if you really want to do a nice meditation um and i'm giving away a little secret it's going to be one of the little acts of power that we're doing in ours ritual um i'm going to tell you about a chakra meditation Um, You get the candles to match the colors of the chakra, which are red, orange, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, and purple. And each one is associated with um, a planet or a god, however you interpret it. So you start your meditation and you just meditate on each chakra as you light the candle. This is a great way to do a chakra cleansing. Wow. Light the candle. And you're burning away all the nastiness in that chakra. You're burning off all the, the crap that you've collected. Now, trust me, we collect our chakras need to be done what every five minutes nowadays. But for those of us who don't have that time, once a week is still a good theory. Red is Saturn. So when you're concentrating on that, you concentrate where, where your red is. Um, then your orange is Mars, your yellow is the sun, of course. Green is Venus with the heart. Light blue is Mercury. Dark blue is the moon. And that's your third eye. And um, then, of course, your crown is purple and the crown is Jupiter. Nice. So that's a nice little meditation. Also, if you light them, focus on it for a minute or two. And then as you light them all, they're all lit. When you start going back to not blow them out, but to cap them out, you can think that that's burning away all the little nastiness you've caught up. And when you douse that candle, it is taking away all the nastiness. It goes up in smoke with the rest of the um, candle. Flame. I really like that. That really is a nice, that. That's a nice quick meditation. That's also a great one to do with the kids because they can all participate in lighting the different colors. Now, if you really want to test them, tell each one of them, they got to look up a little something about the planet that's involved or the chakra that's involved. This is an easy way to teach the children the chakras, teach them the planets and associations, and let them understand that, yeah, we need to clean out things every once in a while. Um, Not just physically, but spiritually. We need to get in there, you know, and start cleaning out thoughts and stuff that's holding us back. So that's just a little thought on Inbulk and the chakras. Um, and since we're going into spring with Inbulk and candle mass is bringing us back to light, try lighting up the chakras and cleaning out from the winter. So that's a little one. That's a little quick. Back because now I've been telling you guys about the grimoire. Um, people ask me, what is a grimoire? Does it have to be a book made out of 
human skin or some ridiculous stuff. No, I do. I'm cheap. I buy binders. I must have 400 binders. Each one has on it what it is. <laughs> and the reason I do this is because I do a lot of different things. And if I don't keep it all separate, I get totally confused in what I'm doing. Ask Melinda. She's caught me on one of those days. So um, your binder can be, this is just for this show. I have another binder for the rituals that I'm doing online. I have another binder that I do for the paper that I write for. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. And keeping it separate, when you pull the binder out, you look at it, your brain automatically goes to what that binder is about. So you've already shifted those gears and it's not like you're looking for a piece of paper on your desk. You've already shifted gears. So right. I, everybody asks about a book of shadows. I'm not going to joke. I have binders and binders and binders. I'm moving next month to move a little bit closer to the water here in St. Pete. And that means I have to pack up all of this crap. I'm <laughs> sitting here now. I know how many binders I have, people. But I recommend these. Um, remember, back in the day, paper was scarce. That's why we had books and we wrote all over them. But you get yourself a binder, you get these little separators in there and you start putting your stuff in there um the reason i do that we give you little snippets here and there in the grimoire that you can actually you know write down and put in a binder um we're going to be doing more and more as the holidays go through and we'll be throwing up stuff on the screen so that you can print it off and we'll try to put some stuff in the chat room if nothing else our stuff will be in our facebook page so you can just pop on our Facebook page. I will include the one I just showed you about the different um, chakra, little meditation you can do. But it's something that you guys need to start putting together. Um, you can never remember this stuff when you're trying to talk it over with somebody. But if you have it, wait a minute, they had it on that show. You can grab that binder and you can look at it and give you the information. There is so much information out there on the internet. A lot of it is misinformation. And um, there's a lot of people out there with Google PhDs. Um, I'm going to tell you that they're not always that good. So I would like to make sure that you guys understand um, what we give out. The information here is true to the best of our ability. We research everything. We just don't come up with stuff on the show. Um, neither one of us is our Google PhD. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> And you're getting perspectives on different stuff too. So I would recommend everybody, um, we're gonna throw more stuff on the Facebook page, download it. Nothing I put up there, unless I specifically write that it's copywritten, um, it can be used and shared. And if you don't teach your kids, somebody else is going to. So please take the information down. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for another awesome show. It was so great. Number three, under our belts. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> this is scary. We're getting this. Oh, and for all of those cool people that have our t-shirts, if you just take a picture of you in this wonderful, sexy t-shirt, throw it in our Facebook page. Don't have to put your name. Don't have just where you're from, the state. Where you're or your face. You don't have to have your face if you don't want yeah, to. Yeah, you can just so do we want to see yeah. where We want to see where our audience is from. So a little selfie with what state you're from would be awesome. So we can see where you guys are popping up around. And those interested in the t-shirts, we will have prices of the t-shirts and the mugs up soon, as soon as we get a good price on them. So if you want one of our mugs, and if you have one, you can just take a picture of the mug and show us where you're from. Because it's pretty exciting when we start seeing where everybody's at. Um, and sending us those would be really cool for the Facebook page. Again, if you need to get a hold of us, our Facebook page, Melinda, how else? Email? You can email at us. Yes, tea time. So it's T E A T H Y M E, like the herb, um, mc at gmail.com, or you can send us a message through our Facebook page, Tea Time with Mother and Chrome. That's why she does the technical stuff. <laughs> so I don't forget okay well we again want to thank Cloud for coming on we want to thank Ebony for her work with Cloud and we want to thank you girl for your little collaboration going on there this yeah, is pretty cool. I'll, be, I'll be adding it soon I'm excited it's it's a lot of fun so okay well we're all going to say goodbye until next week so we hope you enjoyed the show <laughs>